Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're doing a OBS recording, a test OBS recording of a breakdown of a classic scene from the film, A Portrait of the Artist is Filipina, which is, of course, based on the award-winning play by National Artist for Film, Nick Joaquin. And, of course, the film itself is directed by a, also a National Artist for both theater and film, Lamberto Avellana. So those of you who aren't familiar with the story of Portrait of the Artist of Filipino, it's about a rundown house and a family that lives there, two spinster sisters and their uh, crippled father or their sick father. The father was once a great painter, great artist, but he has stopped painting. He has made one great masterpiece. And of course, the whole film seems to revolve around ideas about Compromising one's dreams, compromising one's ideals versus, of course, the practical difficulties of living. So the spinster, spinster siblings are living there, whereas their married siblings are already living away from the house. So everyone's trying to convince them to sell the painting. And then, of course, the, the, this, the other siblings want to sell the house and want to get, you know, move the sisters out and post, put them in, a, in another home. So... What the sisters are doing to try to make ends meet, of course, is either doing uh, tutoring people or giving them lessons, uh, piano lessons or things like that. And also taking in borders into their old house. They have borders. And one of these borders is Tony, played by Conrad Parham. So, of course, Tony as a character is a bit amoral, a bit questionable. So... In this particular scene, Tony has taken uh, one of the sisters, Paula, to a, I would guess, at what we would call right now a motel uh, to try to seduce her and to convince her into selling the painting. So, of course, the sister Paula is played by Nati Krami Rogers. So we're going to take a look first at this uh, particular sequence. Let's play it first before breaking it down. Tony, did you You're think wondering that... what kind of beast I am. No. I told you. I'm always out for what I can get. And I was there for the taking. Now look, Paula. I took you. Because you were thinking of your commission. We agreed on the money. And because you wanted to hurt my father. You're with me because I wanted to spite him. And I did it for the money. And a lot of other reasons you wouldn't understand because you haven't lived my kind of life. I'm all twisted inside, Paula. But I want to make it right somehow. Tony, do you love me? All we need is the money so we can run away and be free. Tony, do you love me? I will learn to love you, Paula. I promise. But give me time. I will learn to love you. I've come to, to sleep. Come to sleep. You have to get up early in the morning to get the picture. Get the picture in the morning.
wow what a brilliant wonderful scene probably one of the best scenes in philippine cinema history and of course i forgot to mention that the place in english to begin with but and of course to a lot of people who don't realize is that english is one of the primary languages in the philippines so most filipinos are multilingual they know the either filipino slash tagalog english as well as their own uh, ethnic language so but wow wow what a scene brilliant the direction the writing cinematography the lighting the editing the everything pretty much the acting it's all there wow i mean it's such a it looks like such a simple and deceptive scene and of course unfortunately other the other version i've seen of this failed spectacularly which was, of course, the musical version. Of course, my, one might say, but it was a musical. But yet, uh, the biggest problem I had, of course, was with Paolo Avellino, who played the role of Tony in that version that Conrad Parmes played. Of course, Avellino's interpretation of Tony is one is quite lazy, to be honest and to be frank. It's pretty much Tony is already an amoral character. He's questionable. He looks out for himself. He's narcissistic, perhaps. He's self-centered. But wow, this scene is able to put these two characters into a in-between place where it becomes more layered, more nuanced, more subtle. In a bad director's hands, this would have just been a typical, this guy's manipulating this lady. He's, trying, he's, he's just seduced her. This is a post-coitus conversation and so on and so forth. But wow. So let's 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 go through it again to see the details and nuances of this really wonderful scene. Bring the audio down a little bit just so I can be heard over the So obviously in this particular moment we're quite aware without it being spelled out that this is a post-coitus scene. Post-coitus so they've just had sex. Uh Tony has succeeded in uh, seducing, sexually seducing, or am I, is that a double, I know, <laughs> double condom? Anyway, point is he has succeeded in seducing Paula. So, just after that scene, and of course, take note, we begin with A, wide medium, and as Paula puts on the shawl, one, what's wonderful about the scene is that, look at the, look at Natty Cram, Crammy Rogers. There's so many mixed emotions on her face. What could be going through her mind at that point? The character is a spinster. In other words, perhaps this is the first time in her whole life she has had a sexual experience with some with so in terms of a, a sexual experience with, with a man. What's going through her mind right now? It's 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 all so mixed. You, you can't I don't know, can you pick out uh awkwardness, maybe shame because of the whole Catholic guilt uh, layer, and so on and so forth. Thank you. So, let's bring the audio up a little bit so we can hear. Tony. Tony. Did you You're think wondering that? what kind of beast I am. Did no. you think? Then he interrupts her, so we don't know. So that's, that's a nice... But of course, uh, Tony being the person he is, doesn't want to talk about her feelings. <laughs> he wants to talk about his feelings. And so we're not quite sure what she would have said in that instance. But it starts with Tony, do you think he cuts her off and he starts talking? I told you. I'm always out for what I can get. What's wonderful about it, of course, with that line that uh, Nick Joaquin wrote and the direction, of course, take note of the direction. It's just focused on the perspective of Paula. Tony is off screen, out of frame. So there's a, there's a tension there. Makes him seem more distant, more detached from, of course, you know, from Paula, who is trying to process and make sense of what has just happened to her. 
and he goes on and on about his own feelings. So he's um, the tone, of course, is kind of well. It's almost, I guess, maybe mechanical, or is it like a practice kind of speech? Does Stony always say this to the women he beds, for example? Is it something, or is it something he's never said before to anybody else? And I was there for the taking. And you take a look at those lines. I was always a beast. I'm always, you know, I'm always in, I'm always ab about what I can get. And she said, I was there for the taking. Look what, what Nick Joaquin did here. It's a self-reflexive scene. It's a self-aware moment. The characters are aware. In a typical, in typical writing or typical fashion, the characters would be oblivious to what they had just done. But the characters are not stupid. They're not, uh, Joaquin and the filmmakers and the actors and the people who made this do not look down on the characters. They are intelligent people. <laughs> and both Tony and Paula are quite self-aware of what they have just done, what has just happened. And of course, this adds a kind of uh, a layer of complexity because it's confusing, but also at the same time, they're aware they must process the confusion, even though they're aware of what they had just done. Mm. comes into frame for the first time I, and is he trying to be sensitive is he trying to also manipulate at the same time so what we can see I guess is it can exist in it's both he's trying to be sensitive to her but he's also trying to be manipulative because you were thinking most of films would either be one thing only so let's pull it back a bit sorry okay we're we'll beginning the beginning again so See, we'll play it out while I call it out again. So Tony on the bed, Paula sitting on the bedside, puts on her scarf. Again, we go back to this is her first time ever to have sex with a man. Mm -hmm. She's a spinster. Did you You're think? Did you think? Of... Now that if I now that I think about it, is is she trying to ask how she was in bed? Is she about to ask that question? But of course he interrupts her because he's all about himself. Told you. I'm always out for what I can get. Oh, it's out for what I can get. Now it's there for the and taking. I was there for the taking. Okay, so it's Tony kind of saying maybe to yeah. her, you know, let's not fool ourselves. Where where this is not nothing. <laughs> this is supposed to be like a business thing, you know. It's not let's not get into sensitive territory. Maybe that's what Tony's saying. That's the subtext of what Tony is saying. So a lot of layers in the scene. That keeps shifting within the context of it. Oh. Create the context. I took you. Because you were thinking of your commission. Yeah, well. We agreed on the money. Mm. Because you wanted to hurt my father. So he's trying to assuage her. He's trying to... Because of course he still wants the money. He wants the, to sell the painting and get the commission. He wants to sell the painting. She's big, and she's kind of hardened to the realization that okay, this guy is not really about me. Obviously, maybe I had hoped somewhat, maybe that he'd be about me, but obviously, it's all about my dad's painting. And of course, the fact that he doesn't like somehow has some kind of um, uh, hate hatred towards her father, which is kind of not, uh, I don't, I can't recall exactly why. Whether it's political, whether it's a perception kind of thing, or whether it's. Um, uh, somebody who's been struggling all his life, hating on somebody who's, you know, coming from a more uh, privileged background. You're with me because I wanted to fight him. Okay. And I did it for the money. It's quite clear. But again, look at how Conrad Parham is playing it. It's almost like he's trying to self-justify in his brain what, you know, so it's not complete. Uh, the easiest thing in the world would be to make to, to to make this guy a psychopath, and just an evil kind of person. Obviously, he's not a good person, but Parham chose to give this guy layers and complexity, as well as, of course, the writing of Nick Joaquin and the direction of Lamberta Valiana, which sadly the musical version Larawan and Avellino completely failed to do. It's a stereotypical f boy player. Con man, that's pretty much a one-dimensional character, pretty much. 
Parham here gives us some hints at why Tony is the way he is. A lot of other reasons you wouldn't understand because yeah, you haven't lived my kind of life. You haven't lived like that. <laughs> so that kind of self awareness. He's trying to ask for sympathy, but I'm all at the fit inside, Paula. But not knowing, you know. But I want to make it right somehow. And and so on and so forth. So that kind of self awareness that you know, I, I or maybe he's also still trying to skirt the issue at the same time. So it's both either a self awareness, but at the same time, he's also trying to avoid getting into uh, that kind of territory because it's of course he doesn't want to be vulnerable. Instead of continuing her line, though, Nati Kramer Roger shifts. Paula shifts instead of continuing that whole line of being that kind of cynical, the kind of hardened tone that, you know, I was just there for the taking. I know it's about my dad's painting. It's not really about me or about your feelings for me. Or there's no such, your feelings for me don't really exist and so on and so forth. She asks him these really powerful, one powerful question twice in two different emotional variations. Mm. Do you love me? Do you love me? Very tender, very vulnerable. That got to him somewhat. What can he say? How can he oh, talk us without the money so we can run away and be free? <laughs> Goes back to the money. <laughs> Do you love me? Oh yeah, she shifts there. She goes into more demanding, more, you know, don't bullshit me. Do you love me? Even though obviously the answer is quite clear, maybe he he most likely doesn't. I will learn to love you, Paula. Ah, it's actually even more, I think, more painful than I'm just in it for the money to say, time. to tell someone I could learn to love you. <laughs> Ouch. And of course, her reaction says it all as she turns away. I will learn to love you. I will learn to love you. I learn to love you. It's like, it's all a business deal to Tony. Now come to, to sleep. Now come to sleep. Let's go back to sleep. Let's avoid all this feelings talk. But, it's quite clear, of course. It's it, it's a very shattering thing to say to Paula. We have to get up early in the morning to get the picture. And he goes back to Tony's. Tony's pretty much his his goal. Get picture in the morning. I don't know what I don't know what's the, what she's feeling right now. It's regret, disgust at him, disgust at herself. I don't know. It's, it's all. It's a lot of things, uh, because aside from physically putting herself out there by having sex with this dude she just put herself out there emotionally by asking him those questions and of course the first answer wasn't as you thought was bad enough the second answer i could learn to love you ouch that really that really pretty much crushed her as evidenced by her behavior here as towards the end of the scene And as Tony again goes off screen, and we return to Paula's perspective. All right. So that was a scene from a portrait of the artist as Filipino, as a Filipino. This particular scene again stars Nate Krami Rogers as Paula. And my apologies if I'm mispronouncing her first name, and uh, Conrad Parham. As Tony and it's one of those things that obviously I think it might it might pass over it might go over your head if you see it for the first time and you don't realize how complex and how rich and how layered the scene is and it's not that long it's about uh, around a two or th two minute plus or three minute plus scene and it says it, it speaks volumes of the feelings and the inner lives of these two very different characters. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. That was, uh, this is again, Linau Films, The Anatomy of a Scene.